and welcome again to Fright Night. Twice through the terror turnstile with your host, that master of the macabre, the epitome of evil, the most sinister man to crawl on the face of the earth. Seymour! Very nice, Wayne. Thanks. Here, you can have your bunny slippers back. Are they fixed, Seymour? Wayne, there was never anything wrong with your bunny slippers or your shoes. It's your feet that squeak. Now, Wayne, walk back and forth. See what I mean? You're in your bare feet, and they're squeaking. Now, here, you take this oil can, and you earl those feet. Oh, that's ridiculous. Wayne, just oil your feet. Now, the other one. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now, Wayne... Walk back and forth. See? There's nothing like the patter of little bare feet on a cement floor. Ooh, gee, thanks, Seymour. That's all right, Wayne. Now get out. <laughs> and oil your knees. He's got squeaky knees. Tonight, do I have a special treat for you? Indeed, I do. Along with two swell movies. And I'm calling them as I see them. I'll be playing back some excerpts all day. from my greatest moment in television. This is in response to the many card and letter asking for an explanation of what I'm doing here. Now, pay attention this time. All right, roll it. Oh, really? For the uncertain horror that lurks behind the slimy wall. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, I direct your attention to the perch high above the center ring and that aristocrat of the air the intrepid, the one and only, Great Maroni. That's a Maroni! Make that Maroni. Tonight, Maroni again attempts the plunge of death. A dive head first toward the ground below without the aid of a net, not even a layer of sawdust. It is through his power of concentration that he intends to turn his body into a rigid mass of steel. Right, Morani? No, that's a Morani! Sorry, two previous attempts have been met with dismal failure because some idiot in the audience distracted Morani with a corny Italian joke. Now, out of traction and back under the big top, the great Morani has taken extra precaution to keep his power of concentration intact. He is wearing a blindfold as well as earmuffs. And now, the plunge. Are you ready, Moroni? Oh, well, it's not Moroni. Ah, yeah, well. uh -huh, yes, I'm sorry. All right, he's poised. He leaps. How am I going to get him? Well, maybe he can't see me. He can't hear me. Ah, I got it. I'll use mental telepathy. Now, Moroni. Did you hear the one about the two Italians walking down the street? One said to the other, oh, 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 Got him! <laughs> he didn't even wait for the punchline. Evan the Pat brought you such outstanding acts as the Buster Crab Quartet. The Mushroom Tabernacle Choir. The Voodoo Two Plus One. The Busby Berkeley Dancer. Excuse me. Oh, another card. Banjo. Keep those cards out of here with his name on it. The Busby. Yes. And now, for the first time on any television studio, the. Four fun guys, take it away, boys. Jimmy Kent with hair, long beautiful hair, shining, gleaming, screaming, black and white. Give me down the there hair, shoulder length and longer. Here, baby, there, mama, everywhere, daddy, daddy. Beautiful. Give me 
five right there. That, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> well, tonight is a special favor because I'm that kind of a guy. Here is Suspects Wanted before sign-off. This suspect is William Beaufort Keckel, Caucasian male who frequently uses the alias Banjo Billy. He is wanted for murdering the banjo. There is a price on his head. He has bushy eyebrows, mustache, and wears a discarded orange John Philip Sousa uniform. On his chest is a tattoo of Wally Bruner. He was last seen in the Des Moines area where he ran out on a motel tab. He is known for his bad jokes. If you have information on this man, contact the local musicians' union. He's behind on his dues. That bum's on every show. Well, he won't get on mine anymore. I'll turn him in. You bet your sweet pea pot it was a swell movie. I'm going to tell you one more time. On the 29th of October, I'll be at the Wiltern Theater at 12 o'clock, straight up with a Halloween festival. Uh, two swell movies and me in person. Remember, I'm not going to tell you that again. Well, maybe one more time. Now, for all you spaced out people, and most of you are pretty far out there, here it is. Flight to Mars. So fasten your seatbelts and have a blast. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed your pizza. And now, salute. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, right in the old fireplace. Let's be serious for a moment, though, shall we? Tomorrow at 4 o'clock. I will be knighted Sir Seymour by the Queen for my courage on the field of valor. Or is that for my valor on the field of courage? Well, no matter. Moving along here. My medals. The Battle of Hastings. The Battle of Waterloo. Khyber Pass. Pass a napkin is ketchup on my tuxedo. Never mind, never mind. Now. For all you dummies who are not familiar with the procedure that's followed when one is knighted, allow me to demonstrate. Hand me that sword. Ah! Not that way, stupid. Turn it around. Hmm. How do you like it? That's much better. You there. You there in the kilt. Come over here. Right over here. Now kneel down. No, you won't bruise your knees. Just kneel down. Now, don't move, because this is a very sharp two-edged sword. Or is it a three-edged sword? Anyway, here's the way it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Taking the sword thusly, with this sword, I knight thee. I'm terribly sad. It doesn't always work. Well, bad news. Now come with me if you dare, and together we'll explore the uncertain horror that lies beyond the slimy yacht wall. Ah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, I direct your attention to the steel cage in the center ring, where that trainer of wild animals, Captain Alfonso, has put together a unique combination of jungle beasts. Mm -hmm. Three rhinoceri, two Bengal tigers, and a whooping crane. As the captain puts it, the rhinoceri have nothing to do with the act. Oh. They just formed their way in. And now they're horning their way out. And don't slam the...
the cage door. Right. The captain now addresses the tigers. Hello, tigers. Oh. And the tigers address the captain. And the whooping crane, well, he whoops it up. Whoopie, whoopie, whoopie. Sure. Now the big cats go to work. It's through the flaming hoop. Not bad. Whoopie, whoopie, whoopie. Whoopie, whoopie, whoopie. And now the tiger. Wait a minute. Here come those rhinoceri. They're not in the act. Whoopee, 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 whoopee. Well, there you've had it, and I've had it with you, too. And you, too, Freddy. The time has come for me to join that dread sojourn into the world that lies out there, beyond the slimy wall. Until next week, when we do it again and again, this is Seymour wishing you and yours you guessed it. Bad evening. Ah! It... One of these days. This has to be the dumbest movie ever, believe me. If you ask me, it's just another snow job. It's the block. Oh, really? Take two aspirin and call me in the morning. Beware of the blob. Take it away, Steve. Confused.